Now, um, we're, going, we're going to go here tonight. Pastor has said it a couple of times about the top coming off. That's my assignment tonight. Let, let's just get out of here and let it come off. You know, we might as well. Might as well. Might as well. You know, the world is being worldly. And getting more sinful every day. Gross wickedness is multiplying. Well, it's time for us. I said it's time for us to start manifesting more gross godliness. Amen. Everybody then came out except us. But tell somebody you coming out tonight. You coming. You coming out tonight. You coming out tonight. Now, Matthew chapter number number six, and uh, let's pick up right here, and then you can sit down next time you get up. It'll be because you couldn't help it. Matthew six. Matthew six is our foundation. Of what we've been talking about. Matthew chapter number 6 verse number 9. It says after this man pray therefore. Our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Flip back over to Matthew chapter number 4. Verse number 17. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom, the rule, the government, the realm of heaven is at hand. Manifested in the earth through this man called Jesus. I want to say that statement again and say it slowly so I can put the emphasis on man through this man, Jesus. I want you to be seated as we continue our journey on this kingdom code, kingdom living, manifesting the culture of heaven on earth. John chapter number 17 is where we're going to start. I wasn't going to, I was going to kind of hit at this, but um, the woman of God spoke this, John 17, if you go there, and can you put that up? I don't know if you have the ability. Do they have the ability to put scripture up here? Because if you don't, that's fine. That's fine. John 17, so go in your Bible, and I want to, I want to emphasize this because as we were fellowshipping at lunch, uh, the woman of God spoke this to me and I just felt the unction in my spirit that I need to go back and hit this um, and lay a foundation for where we're going um, tonight. John 17, verse number, well, it's all good. Let's just start in verse 1. <laughs> well, no, let's not do that. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, <laughs> he says, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may also glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou shalt have thou hast given him and this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true God in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent now listen to these words I have glorified thee on the earth I have glorified thee Woo! oh y'all I'm so sorry I'm so sorry <laughs> You never, you never, I'm serious. I never know when that's coming. I have go glory. Glory to God. I have glorified thee on the earth. 
I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. What you say? He said, he says, now, Father, I have manifested your name, your character, your nature. I have glorified thee on the earth. I finished the work which you have sent me to do. Now, O oh, Father, glorify me with the glory that I had with thee before the world was. I know we'll forget reading this. Asking the Lord, now if Jesus is asking for his glory back Come on now. with the Father that he had before the world was, Come on now. then what glory did he have while he was on the earth? Because it is clear that the glory that he had on earth couldn't have been his if he's asking for his back. Come on, some of you just heard this, y'all. Y'all help me push this through now because I got to push this through. you. So if he's asking for give me back the glory that I had, that I had with thee before the world was, then what glory was he using all that time on earth? Because it is, it, is, it, is, it is very clear that he's ready to get rid of that. And receive back the glory that he had with the Father. Yes. Now, in order for you to understand this, go to Philippians 2. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to get drunk tonight. Oh, God, it's already, it's already coming on me. Philippians 2, Philippians 2. Come on, I had to hold my mule this morning. But I ain't tonight. Philippians 2. Somebody give me two glories. Boy, some of y'all so hard-headed. I said, give me two glories. <laughs> Philippians 2, verse number 5, very familiar passage of Scripture, but we're going to break it down tonight, and I'm just going to teach till the glory come. Come on, man. <laughs> 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 Woo, glory. All right. Oh, look at somebody say, we ain't playing tonight. We ain't playing tonight. No, this, no, we ain't playing tonight. Come on, we set ourselves up for it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let this mind be in you, Philippians 2, 5, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took up on him the form of a servant, oh my God, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yes. Wow. Now this is right here in your Bible. It speaks of Christ having a level of authority, a level of honor, a level of glory. Evidently that he had to relinquish. Let go and empty himself of in order to come down and become a man. See, this is why he's saying, Father, give me back the glory that I had with thee before the world was. 
because in order for him to come earth, come down to earth, he had to empty himself of that level of authority, that level of honor, that level of splendor, that level of majesty, that level of glory. He had to, he had to, words from a verse right there, he had to think it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, that in the King James is a little obscure. You need, to, you need to read that in the actual text because that means that he had equality. With God in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Then God said, let us. There was equality with God. But in order to redeem man, he would have to lose that equality with God. But he thought it not robbery to do it. That's the difference between Jesus and me because I would have thought it was total robbery for me to lay down my splendor to come into the earth, wrap myself in flesh and dwell among men. But he did it. He took off his glory, humbled himself emptied himself of his privileges that he had with the Father and came down to become a man. Now, y'all don't understand, y'all. He, he came down. Let me tell you how low he came. That in essence, the creator had to become what he created. The maker had to become what he made. It was so low down. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was low down for him to empty himself of royal diadem. Take off crown, put scepter to the side, and come watch this as a servant. You missed a good place to say thank you, Jesus. Because if it had not been for the love that he had for you and I. What I'm trying to show you is Jesus didn't come to earth for himself. He didn't fall, he didn't sin, and he didn't need redeeming. He took all that off to come down for you and me. And he took off his glory, stepped down, way down, low down, to become a man and dwell among us as a man. Why did he do it? Why did he take off his glory to come down and become a man? It was because God had predestined something for you. You, you, you must understand that this is all in the plan. Because the Bible declares that he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, which means that when God made Adam in his omniscience, he knew. He knew that Adam would transgress and commit high treason. Jesus had already said, I'll become the sacrifice. For his transgression. Now I'm about to show you a thing. Say, show me a thing, preacher. Show me a thing. For you to understand this fully, you got to go back to Genesis. Let's go back tonight. Genesis chapter number one. I want you to turn there. And if you can't find Genesis one fast, then, you know, you, you're in trouble. Genesis one. So you got to get there quick. You there? All right. Now, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? Now, the Bible says, and the earth was without form, right? Void and darkness was upon the face of it. Okay, how many of you know without me having to take a lot of time to explain this, how many of you know God didn't create it like that? We know this is true because the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the earth, in the beginning, in the beginning. This ain't the beginning. This is Moses' account. Come on. This is what Moses saw. You remember when he asked God to show me your glory? And God told him, say, you can't see my face. 
but I'll show you everything as I pass by. You'll see behind me. What God was telling him is that in essence, he was telling him, you can't see me as I am, but I'll show you as I was. Have you ever noticed why Moses could write Genesis and not be there? It is because when God passed by him and showed him all of his goodness from the beginning, Moses said, my God, I see how it happened. In the beginning was. <laughs> Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God created the heavens and the earth. I saw it all up on that mountain. I saw it. How the earth was perfect, but then something happened and it became void and dark. And you know what happened. Satan fell here. But then the Bible says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light and God recreated the earth back up in his essence. But then Mo didn't stop there. Mo said, and then God said, let us make man. Oh, my God. Somebody shout man, 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 man. Then Mo said, he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and give them dominion over this planet. Somebody say man, 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 mankind, humanity, humanity. God says, I want them born. I want this species created. I want it for one reason is that I'm going to give man, mankind, that's one man too. Male and female, he created, he them. Hallelujah. See, every time I say that, women look at me funny because, because I have to keep reminding women. I have to keep reminding women wherever I go. I have to keep reminding you that you didn't come out of Adam. I ought not to even explain it. I ought, to just, I, ought to, I ought to just send you home and let you deal with it. I ought to just send you to the house and just let you chew on it until you find out what I'm talking about. You have to understand the Bible said God went to the dust and formed a man. But then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. The dust ain't the man. The dust is what God put the man in. And God breathed into the dust and he became a living soul. Which means his spirit didn't come from the dust, his body did. But his spirit came from God. But then God looked at him and said he doesn't have anybody equal to him. He doesn't have any help. He's... Uh, listen... Adam wasn't lonely, he was alone. There is a difference. He had interaction, but he had nobody on his level. He had no equality. My parenthetically insert this, you can have a lot of people around you, but if you don't have anybody on your level, you're still alone. <laughs> you, you, you. And so this was not about companionship, it was about partnership. It was about being relatable. He said he needs help. He needs somebody on his level. He needs somebody in his class. Can't be the animal. He rules over them. So this is not something he's going to have dominion over. This is something he's going to have dominion with. All women, where you at? I might as well work on you while I'm in here. I might as well pop your top two because if you ever get this revelation, you will never wait for a man before you decide to do what God has called you to do. You will never wait for one and you will never need one. Matter of fact, if you need one, it's proof you don't need one. Because if you don't watch this, you'll have women praying for a man with money and they ain't got none. What you mean he got to have some? You do too. Oh, 
y'all done? Okay, all right. I'm, hey, I'm out of here. This is my last service. I'm on the plane in the morning, so I'm just going to let it rip tonight. Listen to me. The Bible says, the Bible says, and when got time for God to give him a match, somebody on his level, watch this. The Bible says he put the man to sleep, went inside, and took out a reel. Listen, y'all, if the dirt ain't the man, the bone ain't the woman. Because the bone ain't nothing but dust. It's just already formulated. And he made that into a woman, which means her body came out of Adam's rib, which came from the dust of the ground. But her spirit came from God. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? And when you get a woman and a man together, you got the fullness of God. Women, I thought you wanted to be set free tonight. I said I thought you wanted to be free tonight. Shout, I got everything in my spirit that a man has in his spirit. So the woman is not the second making of the man. She's the second making of God. Oh, put your hand on your head. <laughs> Come on, say, I bind my mind tonight. I bind it. Don't, don't, don't think tonight. You have to understand. So these, these creatures, these men, women, we're both in God's image and after God's likeness. And God said, that's a man. That's a, that's a woman. On earth, but not from earth. My spirit in an earthen vessel yes. Yes. is what God called the man. You and I both know the story. We were all supposed to come out of the womb of Adam and Eve. That humanity was never to know sickness, disease, pain, poverty, lack. They were never to know fear, oppression, depression. They were never to know, they were never to know poverty. They were never to know any. You don't understand. God made the man and the woman and put them in the garden. Now, wait a minute now, because I got to work on you. Because the Bible declares that God planted the garden and then put the man in it and put the woman in it. He made the garden before he made them. But then after he made them, he put them. He, he didn't ask them. He put them in the garden, in the pleasure. Look at somebody say, I was made for pleasure. Yes, I was. Yes, he, 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 he dropped them right in wealth. He dropped them right in to sapphire. He dropped them right in the gold. He, he dropped them right in to wealth and riches. Why? They were born for it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm going to come back there in a minute. No, let me deal with it right now. They were born rich. They didn't hit the lottery. They were born rich. No, you're not hearing me. I said born rich. No, you're still not getting me. You're thinking I'm talking about they were left a huge bank account and they were born into wealth. No, they were born rich. Which means you can't come from God and not have wealth in your DNA. See, oh my God, help me get this across. See, until you are wealth, you ain't qualified to have wealth. Y'all want me to explain that, don't you? That, that means 
your prosperity doesn't come from anything you got. Your wealth comes from who you are. It's in my DNA, which means I have a wealthy spirit. That's why even before I get stuff, I don't wait till I get the stuff to act wealthy. Oh, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. See, you running around in a place right now and doing things right now. If I were to go outside, look at your car. Go in your house, look at your closet. Just go around and look at your house. It'll, it'll, it'll tell me what kind of spirit you got. Because when you got a wealthy spirit, you don't have to have much to be much. See, you got to have it in you before God gives it to you. Because the stuff can't define your value. You got to have value before you get it. That's why I don't understand. Thank God I have a nice car. People have nice cars. Thank God. Thank God for it. But that car didn't make me feel no better about myself. I was the same pastor in what I drive now as I was when I wasn't driving what I drove. Why? Because the car doesn't bring me value based on its price tag. The value of the car is that I'm sitting in it. No, y'all didn't hear what I said. You didn't hear what I said. No, that car doesn't bring me value. I bring value to the car. The car ain't rich because of what I paid for it. It's rich because I'm sitting in it. I don't care if I'm riding on a skateboard. It can't stop my spirit. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? See, some of y'all waiting to get more before you do more. You waiting to get better before you be better. But God says, no, I want to see if you got it in your spirit. Because if you got it in your spirit, you'll start working what you got right now. You'll start perfecting what you got right now. So now if you mess it now, you're going to be messing Oh, I'm sorry, Rachel, Pastor. Uh, can, can, can I say that in here? He said I can say it. If you junk it now, you're going to be junking it. People say all the time, boy, you don't want to watch that money because that money will change you. The devil is a lie. Money don't change you. Money ain't got no power to change you. When you see people change with money, they were that way all along. They were too, just too broke to show it. <laughs> They were like that before they got it. That's right. Yes. Because you gotta understand that it's in your nature. You're, that's why I was talking about first class. Somebody say first class, first class, high class, dignified. That's what we are. We're dignified saints. We're we're at another level. The way we carry ourselves, the way we respond, the way we represent ourselves is on a royal level. It's in our spirit. So I was born rich. So I realize it's for the kingdom purpose, it's for influence, it's for power. Oh my God, I wish I could stay there, but I'm running out of time. All right, here we go. And so he made them in his image and after his likeness, and God said, that's man. But then, Adam sinned. Oh, Lord is right. Watch the way I'm about to say this. And when Adam and Eve sinned, you died. They killed us all. They killed the woman. They killed the man. So from that moment on, we never saw a real woman. Oh, come on with me. Because <laughs> it's about to get worse. <laughs> 
We're going to repent tonight one way or the other. Either you're going to change your mind or I'm just going to blow it one or the other. I'm sorry, Lord, not blow it. Now, now watch this. We never saw a man. Everything we see from Adam to Christ is a fallen man. But let's fast forward yes. through Abraham, 42 generations. Yes. Yes. And then we find this babe wrapped in swaddling yes. clothes yes. who stripped himself yes. of the glory he had as creator, humbled himself to come down yes. to what he created, Hallelujah. to walk around as the created yes. instead of the creator yes. so that he could show us how Far we were wow. from how he made us. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Ooh, somebody shout glory, 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 glory. He came to show us how far we were away from what he made us. And that's why I came in here tonight. Tonight we've got to shrink the gap. Between what we are and what we is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't expect us to get there tonight, but we got to, we got to close the gap. Because I want you to look at somebody and tell them there's another you in you. That there's another you in you. And it's better than the you you is right now. It's, it's better. It's better. There's another version. There's an update to you. There's another kind of woman and man in you. And when Jesus came to the earth, he came to the earth. Not in his glory, but in the lost glory of Adam. I must go here tonight, Pastor. I'm sorry. He came, he came in the glory of a man. Which means everything you see Christ do, he's showing you the perimeters and the capacity of what God ordained for man. Well, I got weak in the knees. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's your, what's your name, sweetie? Yes. Kendall, how old are you? If I'd have knew this at 13. Come on now. Yeah. Wow. Come on, man. I'd have turned my high school up. My junior high, I'd have tore up everything. <laughs> because I thought I had to wait to get to heaven. I didn't know that heaven couldn't wait to get to me. Oh, jump up on your feet and shout glory. He came down. Okay, be seated, be seated, be seated. So Jesus came down to become a man. So that means he had to function in the perimeters that God gave man. He couldn't do it as God because God gave dominion in the earth to man. So he had to come within the restrictions of a man, within the confinements of a man that were lower than God. When Adam was created, he, he was in the image and likeness of God, but he was not God. He was God's original son. He came out of God. Eve came out of God. So they were born from God. That's why they had to be submitted to God. He gave them limited dominion. He said, don't eat my tree. You still got to obey me. And so now Jesus comes down in a lesser degree of glory. That's why Psalms 8 says you've made him a little lower 
than Elohim. For a short time, he had to relinquish his authority, come down to a lesser degree of authority so that he could show man their dimension. And he walks in the earth as a man. Now, women, you don't get to escape this because Jesus was a man. Because his spirit doesn't have a gender. That's why he says when this is over, sons and daughters yeah. shall prophesy. Yeah. You have to understand. So he comes into the earth and when you see him, you're seeing what you were born to be. I get to see for the first time who I was supposed to be. That's why they couldn't figure him out. They said, now, now we know, we know you're a man. We just don't know what manner of man you are because you do stuff normal men don't do. And he was the essence of Adam. That's why Paul called him the last Adam. That's what he was. He came as a man to redeem man. So he walks around 33 years showing us what a real man is. Walks around showing me my potential, my capacity, my mind, how I function, showing me how far sin stripped me. Of what I could and couldn't do. He showed me the extent of my authority. Because remember if he's in the earth. He has the function in Adam's dominion. This would be a good time to lean on somebody. And tell him that means if he did it. If he did it. I c c c c can. <laughs> Didn't say that you would. It depends on how well we repent. But if he did it, he's showing me my potential. Now, how many of you really want to know yourself? Come on, everything in life is about being you, doing you, being myself, knowing myself. Okay, I'm about to show you. I want my destiny. I got to get in touch with my, uh, let me give you your destiny. <laughs> because somewhere I've got to find a church that wants your identity. Listen, y'all, I'm, I'm older than I look, but I'm younger enough to realize that, that, that look, y'all, like I said, I've been preaching for 25 years. I've been doing this my whole life. And I am, I, oh God. The only thing I want is the glory. Amen. I done done it all. I done been to every church, every conference, ever heard everybody sing, everybody preach, everybody prophesy. Been there, done that. Now I'm going to try this, this Jesus thing. I, I, I just figure that I'm going to stick my toe in the water just to see if I can walk on it. I'll show you something in a minute. My God in heaven. And so now he walks around on the earth to show us what heaven looks like in an earthen vessel. My God, what wisdom that he had. My God, 
he was amazing. He stumbles up on a wedding, and they say, Mary say, um, Jesus, they, they, they're out of wine. He says, well, what does that have to do with me? <laughs> he said, my hour hasn't come. She said, oh, yes, it has. <laughs> and she goes to the people, and they says, listen, we got wine coming. <laughs> and she says, so whatever he tells you to do to produce this wine, just do it. Everybody gathers around and say, okay, what do you, do you want us to go, you know, a truck coming, a donkey coming, load it? I mean, we're going to crush some grapes. What are we doing? What are we doing, Rev? They don't know who he is yet. He steps up. He says, fill, fill, fill the water pots with water. Now, those water pots were 20 to 30 gallons. So it wasn't no just, to, you know. He said, he say, fill them all up with water. They say, wait a minute, Rev, Rev. Wine rail, not water. We, we out of wine. We got water rail. We, we out of wine. Mary say, shut up and do it. She say, we didn't seen some stuff around the house. Y'all don't know nothing about. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Can I preach it like I feel it? And they fill the water pots with water. And like an old Baptist preacher taught me somewhere. Don't know when. All I know it was between the dip and the sip. That the water, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, turned into wine. And when I was reading that one day, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and says, and if I showed you I got the power to turn water into wine, then surely you got the power to turn some stuff around in your Jump up on your feet and shout, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. If it ain't what you want, turn it. If it ain't like you want it, turn it. Okay, be seated, please. Be seated. Be seated. And so he, he, oh, he walks around showing us all the limited, unlimited capacity of a human being. He, he's, so, he's so wise that he knows people before he meets them. Right. He reads their spirits. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's amazing. He's showing us your intellect. Yes. Wow. <laughs> 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 When I read Jesus, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing my intelligence on display. Oh, come on, y'all faint on me. Put your hand on your head. Say, oh, I believe this stuff. I believe. I believe this. I believe this. He's showing me that I ain't got to know what I need to know before I know it. Or even before I need to know it. I'll just know it when I need to know it. He's showing me the difference between education and revelation. He, he, he's showing me how to hear from heaven on earth and have wisdom that confounds scribes and Pharisees. This man speaks to win. Hallelujah. Speaks to waves. That's why this city will never flood like it did years ago. Because y'all ain't going to let it. That's right. <laughs> They didn't know what I said. They, 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 what's your name, sir? What's your name? Sandra, Sandra, they didn't hear me. I said because y'all ain't going to let it. If I had half a church, I said y'all ain't going to let it. He, 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 he is so phenomenal. He speaks to water, then he walks on water. Yeah. <laughs> he, he cast out devils with a word. The thing I love about Jesus is that when he stumbled upon the demoniac of Gadara, who had said, we're legion, we're many, nobody could cast them out. But when Jesus stumbled up on them, came off the boat, they said, uh-uh. 
what you doing here? Oh, God, that's what they're going to say when you wake up in the morning. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. No, no, no. And he's showing you, watch this, the extent of your authority. This is Adam's stuff he's working with. And he tells 4,000 devils, go. And we have been brought up to when we face a situation, we got to get greased down with oil. We got to fast and pray. We got to lay on an altar and we got to pray a strong prayer. That's a prayer that you got to feel it. You got to, you, you got to sweat. And then we do all that just hoping that it works. But Jesus actually had enough authority over devils where they negotiated their own casting out. did that with our authority. Not to mention time would fail to talk about the eyes and the, the limbs and the lame walking and Lazarus coming out of the grave. Then he went to the cross for the joy set before him. What was the joy set before him? Go to John 12. Go to John 12 and I'll be done. Then we're going to talk to some stuff and create some stuff and shift some stuff and move some stuff and cast out some stuff and call in some stuff. Hallelujah. Go to John 12. John 12. John 12. John 12. While you're turning over there, say repent. I repent. I repent. I repent. I'm changing the way I'm thinking. I'm changing. I'm changing it. I've been functioning on the wrong level. John chapter number 12, and he came down, humbled himself, made himself of no reputation, wrapped himself in human flesh. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.15 that he was, he's not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. He came down to be tempted and tested in all points like as we, yet without sin. Boy, now that's a hero. Yeah, he, he said, I went through the best the devil has to offer. And I came to tell you, he ain't got nothing that'll work on you. He, he, but he had to come down and endure it. He's now going to be nailed to a cross. His flesh is going to rip and bleed. And he came down and submitted himself and became humble unto death, even the death of the cross. Hebrews 12 tells us that. For the joy set before him, he did it all. And he went through all of that. So you can come to church <laughs> so we can have musicals and concerts. Come on now. Come on now. Lay your hand on your head. <laughs> Say, I'm ready now. I'm ready. He went through too much for you to stay natural. He went through too much for you to stay normal. He went through too much for you to stay broke. He went through too much for you to stay sick. He went, and no, don't faint on me. I say he went through too much for you to stay bound. He stayed, went through too much for you to be trapped in this natural realm. He went through too much for you not to have revelation. He went through too much for you not to enforce dominion. And he did it all for the joy set before him. What was that joy? We find it in John 12. This is why he did it. Verse number 23. And Jesus answered them and said, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. For truly, truly, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat, oh God, fall into the ground and die. 
it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Do you know what that verse is saying? He is saying hell has went through everything it could for three years to shut me down. Because one of me, hell couldn't handle. <laughs> Just one of me shook this very earth to its core. Just one of me manifested so much glory that John said the books, if we were to write all of his miracles and acts in volume, couldn't even contain it. And he says, whenever somebody wanted the mind of God, they had to come to me. If they wanted to see heaven display authority, they had to come to me. If they wanted the blind to see the lame, to walk the dumb, to talk. If they wanted the storm still, they had to come to me. Because on earth, I was the only begotten son of God. But it was never my plan to be the only one. According to Romans 8, I was to be the first one among many brethren. And he says, I came as a seed of mankind. That when you see Jesus, you're seeing the seed of man. Yeah. And the most shot out you got it, didn't you? He is the seed of humanity. He is the seed of man. He is the seed of sons and daughters of the most high God. And he says, and as long as I'm a seed on the earth as a single seed, there'll only be one of me. But I didn't come to be alone. Because the destiny of every seed is to be planted. <laughs> That's why had they known this, they'd have never put him in the ground. Because when they put him in the ground, he went down as one. <laughs> but he came back up. And when he came back up, up popped Peter, up popped John, up popped Matthew, up pop Paul and up came you too be seated we're almost done now let me ask you the million dollar question because this is where you're going to have to repent excuse me while I holler the law of Genesis is that every seed reproduces after its own kind. Where my backyard farmers at? Where y'all at? Hey, backyard. Backyard farm. Do you have anything out there now? Okay. Tell me what you got out there, Pastor. What you working with? Got sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. Watermelon. Watermelon. Yeah, you black, ain't you? Kind of cow. <laughs> you got the revelation today, did he? He ain't black here. <laughs> so we got some sweet potatoes, some some watermelon, some some cantaloupe. Got any greens out there? Yeah. Got some green. Got some corn. Yeah. Got some corn. Yeah. Okay, let, 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 you you. you let, Purple top. You got any peas, purple hole, black eyed, any peas? Green beans. Green beans, you got any peas, any black eyed peas? No black eyed peas. Why ain't you got no black eyed peas? <laughs> Come on, man. You got to you got to you got to bring this thing all together, man. You got, you got to have some okra, you got some okra right there, you got <laughs> The question though to him is he the reason he doesn't have any black eyed peas is because he didn't plant them. 
Because it's impossible for him to plant watermelon and get peas. Right? It's impossible for him to plant okra and end up with peas, right? If he wants peas, he's got to do what? Plant peas. Well, look what God did. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I'm saying? He took Christ and planted Christ in the hopes that he would get Christians. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Anointed people of God. Now, let me ask you, how in the world, be seated, please, did he plant Jesus and end up with this bunch we call the church? Look at your neighbor and say, he ain't talking about you, so say amen. He ain't talking about, he ain't talking about you. How, how, how did he plant himself and not get himself? How could he plant the seed of Christ, which was the representative of Adam, the last Adam, mankind, and plant that kind of man and reap what we see today? Did the seed change? Here's the bottom line. And this is what I've got to get you to see. Because it's what God has been putting in me. The seed did not malfunction. It did not get infected. It did not change. You and I sit in this building right now with it in you. Every person in this room that is born again is sitting right now with that capacity in you. Let you think about that for a minute. <laughs> you got to digest that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which means we're sitting up in here with God in us. We sit here tonight with Eve in you. With Adam in you. You say, but I never saw Eve. You saw Jesus. It was the same spirit. I did this before and I'm going to do it again. This your water? Your water, good. Now, <laughs> this is water. I got to do this because you got to see this, women. Because, see, we're missing a whole kingdom manifestation. And it's because the women ain't been activated. Wow. Y'all have fallen into the mode of the curse and hadn't functioned like redeemed women. Because, <laughs> because you got to understand, let them have dominion. That was before the fall. After the fall, it was let him rule over the way. So after redemption, it's... Maybe it won't happen unless you say so. Yeah, It'll happen if you say so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I say so. Amen. The reason that order was put in place is because everything is coming into restoration. Yeah. Right. 
But the closer you get to a kingdom house, it ain't walking in there like I'm the head. It's we the head. Tell me what you see, what you see. I see what you go. I, I see what I see that. What you've been talking to today, I've been calling it in, baby. What you've been calling in, I've been speaking to it. And if something happened to your kids, either one of y'all jump up out the bed like devil, what you come on, women, don't get weak on me now. Don't get weak on me. Don't get weak on me. This is water. Two part hydrogen, one part oxygen, H2O. I want you to take a, a sip of that water, sir. Just, just a sip. Take a sip of it. And um, when he sipped it, it, it didn't change. Still two part hydrogen, <laughs> one part oxygen. Y'all married so you can do this. <laughs> I, 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 won't, I want you to take a sip, but it, it's, it's, it's a stretch. Now, come on, y'all got kids, so we know y'all done done something. You, un, you, you understand, so you ain't got to fake it. You understand? Just, just. Now, she drank the water, and the water didn't change. It was two part hydrogen, one part oxygen in him, and it was the same composition in her. That's the way the DNA of God is. It'll work in a man, but God doesn't change when he jumps inside of a That same anointing, Lebo Shada. That's why you can have an Oral Roberts and a Catherine Kuhlman. Y'all don't know what I'm saying. And a Amy Sybil McPherson and a Marie Woodworth Etta. Because anybody that's got that DNA can manifest the glory. And so, let's go there. Let's go there tonight. Let's go there. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd have a talk with her. <laughs> Don't want to drink your water. <laughs> Somebody shout glory to God. <laughs> so here's where we stand tonight. We stand tonight between what we is and what we are. And that gap's got to change. You want to know why people are frustrated with church? They're irritated. They're just discontented. They, yeah. It's because of your spirit is tired of living right. trapped right. in and under the authority of your mind. That you've got Christ in you and he keeps running yeah. up to your mind. And every time the Spirit of God tries to come out of you and show you a dream, show you a vision, it runs into your mind and there it dies. He tells Peter, he says, Peter said, Lord, if it's you bid me to come, he said, come on. Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water to Jesus. Saw the wind boisterous and he stopped and he sunk which means he went as far as his faith would take him he went as far in the spirit until it ran up against his mind yeah. Yeah. and there it died the devil is not will not ever be your problem that's right all you got to do, tell him, go. Whenever there's a situation in my life, and I've preached this to my church, whenever you're dealing with a circumstance and a situation in your life, the issue ain't never what's happening demonically. Matter of fact, if I find out it's demonic, that's easy. 
Most in general, the issue is something we're doing that opens the door and gives it legal right to function because he is, y'all, the devil is afraid of you. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, I thought I was done. Now y'all going to make me preach 10 more minutes. He is afraid of you. Paul, working wonders and miracles. Start casting out the devil. Many demons coming out of people screaming and crying. I adjure you in Jesus' name. Go! Cast out the devils. And then the sons of Sceva, some say Sceva, were sitting there and they say, you know what? We can do that. They say, let's try this. Let's try this. And they stumbled upon a demon-possessed man and says, in the name of Jesus Christ whom Paul preaches, we adjure you to come out. They came out, but not the way he thought. Because they came out on them. Whooped them naked and sent them running in the streets. Because listen to what the demon said. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? He said, you, you say in his name, but you ain't in his name. Which means this ain't no formula. This is authority. This is right. But the point I want you to get is he said, I know Paul. We know him. I told you the enemy is afraid of you when they saw Jesus. They say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I don't understand. These devils were driving all the men of Gadara out. They were breaking chains, violent with men. But when Jesus stepped off that boat, they say, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Have you come to torment? You sit here tonight yeah. with that kind of recognition. Yes. 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 They just hope that don't no loud yeah, mouth yeah. yellow preacher ever come in here <laughs> and tell you about it so that they can keep making you believe that they've got some kind of authority over your life. You don't run from devils. You run to them and tell them, I wish you would. Yeah. I wish yeah. you would. Yeah. I wish you would. You go ahead and try it. Try and see how it works out for you. Yeah. Come on, church. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Because we're wondering what's, what's up with our lives. We're not exercising. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. No, y'all. When I turn 47... I start learning when to quit. <laughs> I start saying, that's enough. Listen here. Listen here. Tonight, something is about to happen to you. Your days of being Clark Kent are over. Tonight, you about to snatch that thing open and go for it. You have been playing small too long, whether you knew it or whether it's just some type of false humility you got. Whatever the case, you got to get rid of it. We got to raise up kingdom sons and daughters who know our authority, who know what we are, who we are, what we got, and open our mouth and act like it. Do I have a church up in here? And so your Bible declares that except a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But when it comes up, it brings forth much fruit. And you are the much fruit he's talking about. The issues with most of our lives are you have been sitting around asking God, what is he going to do about it? And what you don't understand is that Jesus is seated now. He ain't working on earth. And he ain't coming down here. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. But he gave you authority in the earth. And he says, what do you mean, what am I going to do about it? (laughs) 
He says, what you going to do about it? Because what I did down there, I did it with your authority. Y'all didn't hear me. He said, what I did, I did it with your authority. What I did, I did it with your power. When I spoke to it, I spoke to it with your dominion. You don't need me to come down there and talk to it. Talk to it yourself. Open up your mouth and speak to it and command it and exercise dominion. Get up on your feet and shout. It's time. It's time to move. I said shout. I said shout. Wait a minute. Can, can I use you, sir? Wait a minute. Now, most of you know he works in law enforcement, right? So now you go out on patrol and all that. Now you have, what, a badge and a, and a gun, right? All right. Everybody say power. 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 Power comes in two forms. It comes in authority yeah. and ability. Yeah. Let me show you what you're working with. He has delegated authority to go forth and represent the actual, the law enforcement of the chief law enforcement agency of these United States of America. Just broken down into localities and precincts and things like that. But he goes out, he has been authorized and deputized to uphold the law. Now, when you roll up on somebody breaking the law, do, do, do you call the police chief to ask him what to do about the situation? Oh, no. Oh, no. Does the police chief demand you call them before you deal with the situation? By the time you go through all that, you, you, Lord, they been got away with everything. <laughs> Why? Because he delegated you. So you don't roll up on somebody and then call him. He said, if you're going to do that, I don't need you. I ain't coming. You're there. And Jesus is sitting at the right hand Say, didn't I give you a badge? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Didn't I give you authority? Then what you talking to me for? Oh, my God. Look at somebody say, open up your mouth. Speak to it. Now, the one thing God gave Adam and Eve, and the one thing that God gave Christ in the earth was authority. But didn't you notice he didn't give them ability? He gave man dominion, but he didn't give him ability. The Bible says, I've heard it once and twice. I've heard it, that power belongs to God, which means God did not give. Man ability, he gave him authority. That's why even Jesus had to be anointed. Which means the Holy Ghost has all the power. God didn't trust that to a man because he knew he couldn't trust him. But he says, I gave you authority. He said, but I got the power. In other words, you got the badge, but I got the gun. What is he saying? Yeah. If the things on earth won't obey the badge, yeah. then I got the power to deal with it. Yeah. But he can't shoot what you don't speak to. Yeah. Oh, did you hear what I said? Yeah. He can't release power where you don't release authority. Yeah. And so I came in to tell you tonight the Holy Ghost is cocked and ready. What you need from God? What you want from God? Is it healing? Is it deliverance? What you got? Because I got the power to do anything that you need done. But you've got the authority. Lift your hands because we're about to speak to some stuff. <laughs> 